Good afternoon one and all and welcome to another weekend project slash lab. So in this video we are going to learn and experiment with AWS Glue. So the ask for this project is essentially we have certain files which is sitting on S3. These files have nested objects, uh, essentially some JSON which is nested right. Our goal is to process and flatten out these JSON and dump into the output directory or a new table so that we could query these item using standard SQL or essentially Athena to run ad hoc queries. So let's get started on how to do this, right? So I'm excited, I'm on my AWS management console. Uh, we are expecting data in this format, it's a JSON and we have some array of JSON as well. So I'll show you how to flatten out, how to process these sort of data using AWS Glue. So uh, for this, what I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an interactive notebook and before we uh, go any further, I want to show you guys that these files are on S3. Uh, again, you can download these uh, data files. It's uh, simply two records that I have uh, for, 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 for the you know, teaching purposes. So if I come to this bucket, Sawmill 1995, I have a raw where I have these files. So each file has these uh, nested object, right? Now I want to essentially process and flatten out, right? So I'll use a something called as interactive um, uh, notebooks in Glue. So I'm gonna click on notebook, as you can see. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create a job. I'll define my IAM role and click on uh, start. So this will start a sort of a Jupyter notebook for me. And then I can start writing my Spark code here and trying to show you. So let's wait for this to um, start and then I can show you some code and you know. And again, this usually takes about a little time to uh, start, right? All right, so we have our notebook uh, almost there. Uh, the notebook is almost ready. Okay, so this is our notebook. Uh, so first of all, I'll create a, a glue context uh, or a Spark session, right? And as you can see, it's uh, waiting. Uh, so should be ready in a second or two. Uh, after that, what I'm gonna do, I have so certain code snippets that I'm gonna use. So this particular line essentially reads the data from S3. Uh, again, as you can see, everything inside the raw folder, it's gonna read the data. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pasting the snippets here. So I'll go to my notebook and put the, and I, will, I would essentially execute uh, this uh, command. And as you can see, uh, I'll just wait for this to complete. So as you can see, uh, it's still running. So now it's complete. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a command called uh, re-rationalize. This is essentially will break the object for me. So to show you what happens after this is, uh, just want to show you quickly. So let me run this command, and then, uh, as you can see, it, it ran successfully. So if I try to run dot keys on that, so as you can see, I have to essentially this object it broke into two parts. That is, uh, I'll show you. So let me select one of them. So data frame dot select. Let me select the root object, and, and this will make sense what I'm saying. Uh, and then. Do a print schema. So, okay, so if you observe name, first name, last name, and job, right? So, first name, last name, and this essentially it created a one object. And uh, to show you uh, really quick, if I want to do if this works, hopefully. All right, so if you observe, uh, essentially Saumil, uh, so my first name, last name is a one object uh, in the data frame. And let's take a look at the second um, second item in the, so this would be roots.jobs, right? So I'll essentially put this one, and I just wanna show you the data frame, how it looks like. So if you observe what it did, it is, since this is like a one to many, right? A person has many jobs. So the many part, it essentially broke into a separate entity, right? So now I have two data frame and I, now I can store this on S3. So I can simply iterate over this and I have a simple code here for frame in data frame dot keys. 
uh, it's going to dump all the files to my S3 in a two folder. So if you observe my screen, I'm creating a table name for each particular entity, right? So if I run this particular cell, Uh, hopefully should, should, should be done in a second or two. So yeah, this is uh, okay. Now if I go to my S3 and if I try to show you, if I go to the buckets, if I refresh, I have a output folder here and I have two tables as you can see root and of course whatever name you want to give, you can uh, give the appropriate name. But what this gives me an ability is now I'm going to stop my notebook. I'm going to go on AWS Glue. Now I can simply run my crawler on this uh, data store and essentially uh, if needed, I could query this uh, using a standard SQL. I can run a glue crawler on that. I, as you can see, the crawler, crawler is just running. So I'm running the crawler on the output folder now. It, uh, it is essentially going to create these two tables for me. So I can run ad hoc queries uh, using Athena, right? So basically, if I run this now, as you can see, I have my table one, which is uh, root one, right? So I'm in Lithin. And here I have a, you know, an index as well, right? So now I can run the second one. And as you can see, software, this, that, I have an index and of course the document ID. So if needed, I could join, right? So what happened if you observed is uh, in this process, we broke a complex structure into its own table. So for example, this became name.firstname, name.lastname, and the array which had multiple objects essentially is broken down into a separate table. So if needed, now you could join and essentially uh, do your further processing if needed, right? But uh, yeah, that's how essentially you can essentially, uh, if you have nested objects, you can break your nested objects into separate tables. And then if needed, you could select uh, or join entity and perform further ETL action. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video would be useful. I'll try to leave the pseudo code in the description. So if you have any more question, list your question in the comments and we'll uh, try my best to answer that, right? So again, as I said, right, uh, if you have unstructured data on S3, uh, use a glue to identify the schema, then essentially you can run this script to break the complex structure into its own table and then select the item and clean the data and then dump the cleaned data into a separate S3 bucket, right? Um, so I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming, and I'll see you.